So these are some of the machines they're keeping. We've got this little South Bend lathe here. That is a WF Barnes Camelback drill. Got a small radial arm drill. That's a Black & Decker one and a quarter inch magnetic drill. And over here, I am getting this machine. See this really tall? This is a hydraulic brooch. See, these are the broaching bars. Bunch of the tooling for it. Here's the electric motor that drives the hydraulic pump in the reservoir. Not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's cool and it was part of the deal. Machine Products Corp, Detroit, Michigan. We got a surface plate, or whatever it is. It's a precision surface plate. Wow, look at this thing, it's huge. What a beauty. Here's Apprentice 514524, very similar to the one I restored, the broken bench vise. This one's newer. It's got a sticker here instead of an actual badge. And look, somebody beat on it and broke it.
check out this boring water bottle. This is huge.
Big Joe. Meet Big Joe. When I was first contacted by the owners of the property um, and I went to go look at it, this is what I brought home. I basically left it all boxed up because I wanted to show you guys, you know, what came out of there as a whole. And so we're going to start with these, kind of go through some of it. I've actually not even opened the box. I kind of threw it in there or some of it was already pretty, like that far right green one. It was in that cardboard box. I threw it in that tub to get it out of the bed of my truck. And that's as far as I've gotten with it. So let's check it out. We'll go through it a little bit of it and kind of show you what uh, what we got. So we got a miscellaneous wheel, keyed wheel for some machine. I'm not sure which one it goes to. I don't think it goes to any that I purchased, but figured definitely be able to either replace one on something that broke or hang on to it for a future. An adapter plate for one of the lathes. Unused, un no bolt holes in it. We got a lathe, the surface plate. Don't know which one of the lathes it'll fit, but it's in very good shape. Threads are in great shape. And we got another lathe dog. That'll be good. We'll take that off. I'm not sure what this shaft went to, but. Good to have all kinds of sizes of lathe dogs. So there were all kinds of different handles and basically wrenches for some machines that weren't there anymore. And because I bought so many of them, I grabbed all of them that I could find that weren't sitting next to a machine. I left all the ones with the machines that were still there because obviously those are going to need be needed for those machines. But the miscellaneous ones, I grabbed them because... I don't know if I have all of the wrenches that I need for the machines that I did purchase. And so, because I purchased uh, six lathes and two drills, 
you know, plus all the other accessories that I got, these will come in handy. Here's a tool holder for a lathe. It's a number, it's an Armstrong number 1S. So basically it's for a straight tool. Basically you put it in there and this tightens down onto the high speed steel or whatever cutter you've got in there. So some sort of a threaded ended taper attachment. I don't know exactly what it's for, but there's a Morse taper adapter. Probably a two to a three, maybe. Basically, it would take like a smaller tapered section, put the smaller, and allows you to put this into a bigger uh, tapered tool or tapered uh, receiver. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's some sort of a tool holder of sorts. I don't know if these go with it or not. But again, like I said, some of the stuff, I definitely don't know what everything is. So this is some sort of a jig of sorts. Had this wired to it. Got this nut here. If you know what some of this stuff is, definitely leave a comment and make sure to leave the timestamp regarding the item that you're, uh, you're commenting on because there's going to be uh, a lot of different things in this video and it really helps me know what you're referring to because I can't can't read your mind obviously so this cardboard box was sitting at the very back of the shop near the garage door that uh, we unloaded a lot of things out of and it was just a cardboard box and the second I got it back to my shop the cardboard fell apart so I found this plastic tub and it looked like just scrap metal and but I saw some high-speed steel in it and so I got kind of excited but I didn't have time to go through it so we're gonna do that now so Oiler. This is just a chunk of pipe. Some uh, nuts of some kind. Some, uh, weird looking nuts. Oh, sweet. Oh, there's a chuck in here. Oh, it's a Jacobs. Jacobs number 36. Free too. Wow. Probably a number two Morse taper on there. Yeah, that's cool. And there's some high speed steel. Man, look at all this high speed steel. It's got a carbide cutter on it. Wow. My goodness. I didn't realize there was this much in here. I would just dump this out, but I really don't want to ruin some of these by dinging them up if I can avoid it. And they're dirty, but I mean, they don't look all that bad. And there's a cutoff for a parting tool. Winston's. Mmm, yummy. There's a lot of high speed steel garbage cutters in this box. Dang. This is like scrap. Right next to the garbage. The end is nowhere in sight. That's a drift for getting parts out of tapered shafts. may look dirty to you and it is but definitely some awesome stuff here Jacob's Chuck 
some sort of a an adjustable live center with a hole all the way through it. Might maybe it's dead center. I don't know if it's got a set screw here. Maybe you can just replace the, the dead tip. I don't know. Center drill, reamer. All of this is high speed steel or carbide um tool right, right there there's where the carbide is attached to the piece of high speed steel so all in all it was definitely an awesome box to grab Diamond wheel. Oh, it is here. I didn't even know. Huh. Not exactly sure what these are. I don't know if these are cutters of some kind. They feel and look like high speed steel. They say made in the USA. 1468 says on that one. One says Y360. I don't know. Oh wow, these are wow. These are brand new. Carbide cutters. Never been used. There's the radius. Okay. There's four more. Some with some, some wax on them still. Oh wow, there's two of them, brand new. Ten of metal, WS4. Probably the original box, just missing the lid. Ah, this is a removable reamer. If I'm not mistaken. I have a bunch of the heads that fit onto this. Morse number four. What is this, just a handle? Does this just go into whatever the Morse number four is and you can use it as a handle? I don't know what it looks like. I think this is for brooch. For a brooch? It's a big dead center. So this and this, I believe, work with this. So see how there's that notch here and here? I believe these fit right onto this shaft. Assume you got some sort of a tool that fits in here that pops this off. I'll have to look into that. I have a bunch more of these in another cup somewhere. Made by the Allen Manufacturing Company. Hartford, Connecticut, patent June 7th, 1910, three quarters of an inch, square female, square male. I'd say that one's toast. Probably bread. Holy bread. And we got this roller jaw chuck. Weaver's roller jaw chuck. No idea what that's used for. But it looks cool. 
cutters. Some of them are brand new. Bunch more Some big ones. UTD Co. Athol, Massachusetts. That's Starrett. Trust me. I know these are not stored right. This is how I found them. I was not the first person in this building. I'm probably honestly one of the last. And I had no say in the way these things were taken care of. And at the end of the day, it was the way it was. And it's not a, for me to judge. It's not for you to judge. It's what happened. From here forward, it's my job to take care of them. So, they will not be stored like this here, but they got to come out of the box. Man, these things look like freaking circular saw blades, <laughs> although thicker and way better. So here's all the cutters out of that box. Number five, Armstrong boring bar tool holder with a boring bar in it. Missing the, uh, like a piece of high speed steel, but that's cool. Life Center. All right, so here's what we got from that last box. We got an Armstrong number nine tool holder, a uh, boring bar holder with the boring bar in it. Another boring bar, needs a little cleanup. Another boring bar, a little bit more unique. Fly cutter and a number two more taper. A couple of taper attachments, or taper adapters. A couple of taper to straight adapters. A live center. This is some sort of a uh, holder for some sort of a cutter. Might have something that fits on it. I don't know yet. Let's uh, see what I've got. Spinner wrenches, some carbide tips, high speed steel, some drill bits, some reamers. And yeah, so that's about all I got that first time that I went. Also, in that last box, I got these uh, old books. What's your grinding problem? A troubleshooter manual for the grinding. Machine operator. Pretty cool. Honing heads. Carboli. Carboloy. Shows you how to basically how to grind. 
different bevels and different uh, angles into your tool. Another Norton grinding. National Acme Chaser Chaser Grinding. Norton Abrasives Tool Room Guidance. Guide on grinding. Bore reaming with Madison Production Tools. Beasley Chicago Handbook for the Users of Steps. Probably still a really relevant guide. I love old manuals and old uh, guides and books like this. I love looking through them. Love finding them. This is... The, I don't even know if it's all of them yet, but if some chucks, chuck jaws, face plates, found some more of these uh, um, reamer heads that basically fit onto that, that tool, um, extra jaws for chucks. So basically, one of the big things that happened to chuck jaws and the reason they need to be replaced is, as you can see on this one, all these teeth have sheared off. And so it would need to be replaced with a new one that has all the teeth in it. So I don't know exactly what chucks these fit. Um, I know they don't fit this chuck here, but um, definitely nice to have some extras around just in case. Uh, looks like most of these are three jaw chuck sets. I don't know what these three jaws or these three chucks are called. So if you know what type this is, I think that these fit um, the LeBlond lathes. I don't know for sure. I haven't found. Yeah, there's a name right there. Skinner Chuck Company, New Britain, Connecticut, USA, number 208. Union. Manufacturing Company, New Britain, Connecticut, 9-inch number 40-C. And up there it's got a 40 and then some sort of a mark right there. So that's those two. Right, so right here it says D.E.W.Co. -E Duco. Over here it says H2. This jaw is marked S. This one says H1. If you know anything about these three chucks, leave a comment below with the timestamp or the name of the three chucks because we got the Duco, we got the Skinner Chuck Company, and we got the Union Company Chuck. I'd love to know more about them what they're used for. Here is another uh, lot of things. So this is a quick change turret that would go on a lathe that has not been used in a long time. It's pretty rusted. Definitely needs some TLC. The bottom of one of the crates that had a bunch of uh, milling cutters and things was were these three, actually four things. We have this, which I have no idea what it is. Essentially, it's got all these holes in it, and it looks like it mounts to a mill. And maybe it's a drilling apparatus of some kind, based on all the miscellaneous holes. Baumbach, B-A-U-M-B-A-C-H. Patent applied for. Line up. Arrow, an arrow on the body, and an arrow on this pin. And here we have a milling machine vise. It's missing the uh, 
the actual handle. But it is made by Sheldon Machine, an M16, M16, or maybe it's an M something 6. Sheldon Machine M16 milling machine vise. Obviously, I'm going to have to come up with or find a uh, handle for cranking the vise in and out. But, yeah, that looks like a nice vise. I'm not sure what this thing is either. Basically, it's got this bit, and when you crank this, this comes out further this way. So it's coming, it's, this is literally moving out. Got some markings here. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. Check out this boring bar. Big monster boring bar. Got the cutter here. Yeah, this thing is a beast. Made to do some major work. Most of these things, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm no machinist, I believe are shafts and Basically, they would go into a hor the horizontal milling machine that they had there, the LeBlonde. Basically, it would fit into the taper or something, and then you would put one of those cutters af right after this nut here. A whole bunch of them. Some of them are, you know, like a standard taper, like a Morse, Morse taper. Some of them have, you know, larger tapers. Some of them have the groove down the center for different uses. Some of them are actually threaded, so they'd be more like a, you know, a, this style you would have a spindle that would basically screw into that. I believe I do not know everything about a lot of this stuff. But I look at it like I'd rather grab it and not need it than end up needing a piece of something and then not having it and wishing I would have just grabbed all of the tooling. 605, 607, 752. Here's my, this is a boring bar of sorts. Stick your cutter through there. Set screw holds it in. At least I think it's a boring bar. Different spacers for maybe like spacing different cutters throughout the shaft. So yeah, that's those. Alright, so this is how a drift works. So basically they're a tapered piece of metal and you have basically these holes on the sides of tools and the way that they're inserted is just friction. They're just hammered in because the shafts are tapered, thicker toward the bottom, skinnier toward the top, basically allowing a good snug fit, especially once the tool touches and it starts getting pressure put down on it. So to remove them, you have to have a way to pull it apart without destroying the head, you know, the cutting implement, etc. So you basically take the drift, stick it right here through the hole. If you watch right here, you'll see these two 
pieces separate. Just like that. And then this slides out. See that tapered shaft? And then now we have separated the adapter, as it's called, from the actual tool itself. Here is a large chunk of the larger cutters and mills that I got. There's a lot of them. Some of these are monsters. Look at this. Fairly good shape, too. These here are all additional uh, jaws for this chuck. And then we've got another massive, check out this boring bar. Monster boring bar. Huge in this holder. I don't exactly know how the holder works, but definitely a beast. All right, we got another smaller chuck here. Got a on-off switch for a machine. Bunch of cutters. The uh, dividing head plate. These are flat bolt, flat belt pulley pulleys for electric motors. So see they're already keyed so you can basically put them onto an electric motor and run a flat belt right off of this. And if you don't know already I am in the near future wanting to set up and build a, a building that's specifically for blacksmithing and old old machine tools probably specifically blacksmithing and then another area for machine tools but the blacksmithing area is going to basically all be flat belt run and so I'm definitely looking for pulleys like these. I'm looking for the full shafts and all that, line shafts and all the parts and whatnot. And some other handles, a couple of big, big drifts for some of the bigger things. Got a lantern tool post holder. Looks to be missing the wedge. That would go on top. But this is an Armstrong 4R. That somebody has milled down and cut off to make it fit this tool post. Then we've got a this is a an Armstrong number 22. This is a, a parting tool holder. So you'd put the parting tool in here, and it would allow you to cut off things in a lathe. This is a Williams. Let's see, uh, T2S. So basically a straight carbide tool would go in there. This looks like a homemade tool. Somebody made it for kind of reaching up and under something. There's some Babbitt, which is melted down and used for bearings and old machines. United American Metals, Magnese. Magnese Babbitt, Brooklyn, New York, Chicago, Illinois. This is another uh, cutter that was in one of the tool, one of the machines. And they had different ones uh, for different machines that definitely looked like they were made in-house, specifically for, you know, cutting a bunch of grooves and something. I don't know specifically what this is for, so if you have any ideas, that'd be awesome. Definitely let me know. No idea what this thing is. It's got a little shaft. Maybe it's air-driven. I don't know what is it kind of a pump of sorts maybe not sure model EGCC 1201-1057 WNS one three I can't quite read it all it says Viking right in there. 
Got a center. This is for the turret lathe. So basically this mount on one of the sides of the turret and you crank this up and down. Uh, it bolts on from the back here, these four bolts. And then got graduations on this dial here and it has two tool holders, tool holes. There's another mystery tool. I believe these are cutters. Um, basically got this tightening thing. I believe this goes with the turret lathe as well, as far as another tool. It's got a very similar sized shaft. I don't know what this thing is. So many of these things from this place were custom made or home, or absolutely shop made for a very specific use and you know there isn't a number or model number that we can reference. So if you have any ideas on some of this stuff definitely leave a comment below. And then in the room there were a bunch of drawers with all kinds of uh, miscellaneous you know hardware and different things that you know they they were probably just going to get rid of it. So I, I took it. I'm going to dig through it, see if anything's worth anything. And then this. So I found another abandoned machine shop that had a bunch of tooling that they were selling really cheap. And this is what I've got, what I picked up. So tons of carbide inserts. Bunch of cutters to be used with them. There's end mills, end mills, end mills. Got high speed steel, high speed steel. These are some rusty ones, but actually they're in very good condition. It's mostly surface rust. So I'm going to clean those up later. Bunch of fly cutters. I don't know what these are. There's a bunch of different ones. Um. You know what they are, I'd love to know. And check out this this reamer. Somebody had a really bad day. I mean, man, the forces it takes to bend something as hardened as this. It looks dangerous as all get out. Glad I wasn't around. Bunch of different uh, keyway cutters, counter sinks. We got some uh Taps, those are all center drills, some reamers. This is just an assortment of different things. Those are all tabs, taps, different uh, boring tooling. They had some CNC machines that were really old and they were already gone by the time I got there. And so apparently they didn't know those went with them. So I got those. This is all drills, all brand new drill bits. Um, these boxes here, I haven't fully gone through, but there's a bunch of like attachments for um, micrometers and, and gauges and stuff. This is a ton of Starrett tools and, and layout and, you know, brown and sharp. There's some Lufkin tools in there. Haven't fully gone through it all. And this thing is just like a Anything that was a tool that wasn't tooling, I put in here Allen wrenches and files, clamp or uh, yeah, clamps, deburring tools. Um, and then over here we've got different micrometer micrometers. All those green ones are uh, Metatoyo. Um, there's calipers. All these brown and sharp ones are all the same. But most of them are in pretty bad shape, and the one that's good, that's actually fully complete and working, it doesn't quite um, return to the same spot every time it's off, like, by a couple thousandths. And so I'm not sure if there's a way to rebuild it, or if there's a kit, or if you can send them off. I'm sure I could send it off, but I obviously I try and avoid spending the money. Um, but gauge blocks... Tons of different, uh, so here's their whole pile of uh, dead lead, lead hammers. Other than that one, that one came from somewhere else. 
but I plan on melting those down and making some new ones. So here we've got some oilers up there, a tailstock, a couple of chucks. That chuck is a bison. And this one is a hardinge. And a couple handles look like they go for to a milling machine or something. A lot of the stuff that I get, I don't necessarily always know what it is right away because many times I find it and it's so cheap and I, I know it's useful for something. And so I just, I grab it and then I figure it out later. So a couple tapping heads. I think this was, this is an Etco and then obviously that's a, t a Tapmatic. Um, a couple of machinists, small little machinist spices. Some uh, V blocks. These three here, uh, are, right here, are brown and sharp. And I don't know what these are. These wheels are for. If you do, I'd love to know. There's five, and they're all numbered one, two, five. Some other V blocks. This looks like it goes to a, a keyway or a, a brocher, broaching. They didn't have the broaching bars, but there was a 10, one, two, three blocks. Some Morse taper adapters, pretty much from one to five. Some collets. I don't know what kind of collets these are. I was looking everywhere trying to find a number on them, and there's not. So if you know what number or what, what kind of a ahead I need to use those I'd love to know there's a bunch of 5c collets not sure if it's the full set of them or not those are all smaller Jacobs chucks the centers here this is a live center it's a big old live center there's a couple dead ones this is alive the Jacobs chuck this is an Albert check um, keyless chuck it's a pretty cool uh, adjustable knurling attachment literally you crank this and it brings it in and out adjusting how wide something you can do and that thing can go into almost up to like two inches is really sweet a couple clamps and what are these I, I know they're for layout I mean obviously they're not parallels do you just use them to get different gate angles different I'm not sure. A lot of this stuff, I don't know what it is. I um, mean, obviously, I know like that's a jaw ch or a chuck jaw. So a bunch of uh, hold downs and all the bolts and the T nuts for clamping whatever. A bunch of parallels. Some of them are American made. Some of them are Chinese bunch of different sets here the box is actually full but they've got some rust on them I I don't know how how big of a deal um, it's a cheap set probably anyway but I don't know how big of a deal this is I mean does this is this overly effect because I mean obviously I'll try and clean that off but I mean and again I'm not a machinist I'm just a dude that likes these tools and has the desire to learn and make stuff with what I've got and then there was a bunch of uh, I got a ton of extra metal just scraps and cutoffs and whatnot and then there this thing I'm not sure quite what it is there's a bunch of parts to it but uh, it's just I don't know so yeah definitely a lot uh, if I had to buy all this I mean I would never pay new price for all this I got it really really cheap and you know a lot of machinists and you guys might think that this is just some junk and it's no good but i mean i'm not looking to put out parts that are going to be to high tolerances i'm looking to make this and that here and there and here at salvage workshop you know fix, make parts for machines that i restore or you know build something cool um so i'm excited i i can't wait to get it all organized get it all put back or put away and 
clean up some of the stuff that's rusty that might need you know and throw away obviously what's what's garbage but it's not worth hanging on to it's not any good so so yeah let me know your thoughts and that's what i got talk to you guys later